your science teacher today we are going to talk about cells now first of all before discussing on to the topic we all know that there are so many different types of organisms of different variation having different uh, shapes and sizes food habits and habitats etc so all of these variations now what is the similarity between these living organisms there is one similarity between these living organisms is that they are all made up of cells so we are going to start by what do you mean by cells cells are the structural and functional unit of life 65 an english scientist named robert hooke he made his own microscope and with his own microscope he wanted to investigate the uh, structure of the cork cells so what he did he did was that he actually took the thin slice of cork and investigated and observed it under the microscope now when he observed it he saw very tiny compartments and named them as cells then in 1839 two german scientists named slyden and schwann they gave the cell theory which states that the structural and functional unit of all living organisms are cells and cells arise from the pre-existing cells that is through cell division so students our cell contains three main parts the three main parts of the cell are cell membrane cytoplasm and nucleus so first of all we will begin with cell membrane or we can call it as plasma membrane now what is a cell membrane every cell is covered by a very thin sheet or skin which is known as the cell membrane the cytoplasm the nucleus and all the other organelles are enclosed inside the cell because of the cell membrane this cell membrane allows various different molecules like water or other nutrient molecules to either enter inside the cell or to uh, exit from the cell it also separates the internal environment of the cell from the external environment of the cell next we are going to study cytoplasm so what is cytoplasm cytoplasm is the jelly like substance or jelly like fluid which is present inside the cell this cytoplasm helps all the other organelles to get embedded inside the cell and it also allows the movement of certain nutrients or certain organelles from going from one place to another it is also the place where many chemical reactions so take place cytoplasm is basically the medium in which all the organelles lie now next is the nucleus nucleus is a large spherical organelle which is present inside the cell in animal cell it is present in the central position whereas in a plant cell it is present in the periphery so now what about nucleus nucleus controls all the activities inside the cell it can also be known as the control center of the cell or the brain of the cell so now what does this nucleus mainly contains nucleus mainly contains a thin network like structures which are known as chromosomes these thread like structure chromosomes are what you can say made up of dna now what is dna it is a deoxyribonucleic acid which is mainly the basis of the genetic material this a uh, particular chromosome a particular region of the chromosome is known as genes now a gene is mainly coding it's like a code like you we have in the computer right so a particular gene codes for a particular protein like for example the color of my eye is dark brown so in my cells in my nucleus in the dna there is a gene present in the chromosome there is a gene present okay which is mainly responsible for the color of my eyes so yes that is how important our nucleus is and the genetic material is so genetic material is also known as the unit of inheritance 
that is genes are also known as a unit of inheritance inheritance means that uh, like for example uh, your parents okay uh, some uh, some of your relatives when they come to your home okay they say that this particular character like for example your nose look uh, goes on to, for your father okay and your eyes are just like your mother right so this comes uh, this particular uh, like you know relativeness is known as the inheritance yes next is uh, so we discussed about nucleus the genetic material inside the nucleus now nucleus is guarded by a nuclear membrane okay nucleus also is guarded by a gate kind of structure outside the nucleus which is known as nuclear membrane which contains tiny pores okay through which uh, the chemical exchange can occur nutrients uh, can enter inside the uh, nucleus or it can go uh, outside the nucleus so nuclear membrane nucleus also contains a nucleolus structure from where the ribosomes are being produced manufacture of ribosomes so that we are going to study in the next part okay fine so i hope you understood about nucleus so students i hope you understood about nucleus now you must be thinking that we have discussed cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus and all of these organelles know where did the role of energy came now energy is that something which is required to fulfill all the work inside the cell also so which organelle provides the energy so mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell which provides the energy to perform all the activities inside the cell this mitochondria is uh, covered by two membrane structure okay the outer membrane is simple the inner membrane is folded the outer membrane is also porous the porosity of the membrane helps in exchange of glucose why is glucose required because the breakdown of glucose only releases energy and that is also done inside the mitochondria so therefore the power house of the cell is mitochondria now this energy which is released inside the cell it is actually released in the form of atp adenosine triphosphate it is known as the energy currency of the cell just as how we have the currency like indian rupees or dollars or euros in the same way this also energy can also have the currency which is atp so i hope you understood about mitochondria now next we will move on to cell wall this cell wall is present outside the plant cell and it protects the plant cell from external environment it is cell wall is only and only present in outside the plant cell it is not present in the structure of animal cell as animals can locomote whereas plants cannot so it has to be protected from the wind speed or the humidity or you know all the other extreme conditions which are faced by plants as they cannot move to protect themselves from the harsh conditions of cell wall is actually made up of cellulose which is a tough material now this cell wall also provides strength and support and shape to the plant cell now next uh, do you know that cell wall is actually the non living part of the plant cell plasma membrane is it living or the non living part so this is a question for you all let's see if you can answer it now next moving on to chloroplast chloroplast are one very important organelle of a plant cell i know that you all know that chloroplast are only present in the plant cells these chloroplast are responsible for making the food okay they synthesize the food through the process of photosynthesis and they can do so because they contain green colored pigment that is the chlorophyll pigment through which uh, this chlorophyll pigment actually uh, can detect the light and because of it the photosynthesis occurs in them so chloroplast 
next we are going to study about vacuoles now what are vacuoles vacuoles are also organelles which are present inside the plant cell they are they can be present inside the animal cell but only in a very like very less amount okay that is hardly one or two or which is also known as a negligible so uh, these vacuoles what is the function of vacuole the function of vacuole is for storage now plant cells they secrete not only they uh, synthesize food that is in the form of glucose but also certain proteins and certain vitamins and so many other nutrients so these particular nutrients can be or has to be stored inside the plant cell itself so they are stored in the plant cell where so in the vacuole so vacuole mainly functions for the storage of different nutrients so students i hope you understood about vacuoles uh, not only vacuoles stores uh, the useful products but also the waste products as well in amoeba it also acts as a food vacuole now okay so we have studied almost all the organelles which are there in your syllabus in your this chapter now i hope that you understood all of it what is a cell and the different parts of the cell we also studied some organelles which are included only in plant cell so i hope you understand the difference between the plant cell and animal cell now let us discuss that so the animal cell only contains a cell membrane whereas the plant cell contains cell membrane as well as a cell wall which is made up of cellulose the plant cell contains chloroplast whereas animal cell does not the plant cell contains large vacuole which almost takes occupies about 70% of the portion of the cell whereas the animal cell uh hardly contains vacuole so uh, i hope this part of the chapter is clear now next will be the next half of the chapter and i hope that you all are doing the assignments also so the assignments has to be done properly and fine so i am concluding this part of the chapter thank you all for watching it stay home stay safe